Can you just start by introducing yourself? Hi, I'm Chris Licky. I'm the President and Chief Engineer at Planetary Resources, the Asteroid Motor Company. Can you tell us a little bit about what you guys do? We're developing resources beyond Earth. And technology and science and the information that we have today is at a point where we can actually consider the resources of the solar system part of the economy of the Earth. And we're developing the technology to go out, prospect, claim, and develop these resources for future markets both in space and potentially for return back to markets here on Earth. And will you be doing the mining yourself or are you just developing the technology? Uh, we'll probably be working all of it. Today we're working on prospecting technology to characterize and provide a value for the resources that are out there and identify the most economically viable and profitable mining technologies and uh, properties. And we'll over time then develop that probably with many competitors uh, into the future space resource industry. Great. So cost is always a big issue when we talk about space mining. Can you tell us how is planetary resources overcoming that challenge? Well, cost is something that small teams are now able to do what it once took entire governments to do. We've been exploring space for 50 years, both with humans and with robots. And because of the advance of technology, we can actually do these things privately financed with expert teams of people. And we intend on doing a lot of this type of stuff for a tenth, a twentieth uh, the cost of what previous government missions have been, and actually bringing it into the realm of costs that normal Earth-based prospecting usually expects to invest when developing a resource. And how are you doing that? Can you tell us a bit about your team? Yes, we have a team of about 40 staff in Seattle, Washington. These are engineers and technologists with experience from places like Intel. Uh, many people from NASA. I myself was flight director for the Spirit and Mar uh, for the Spirit and Opportunity Mars rovers, which actually landed on Mars about 10 years ago this week, and uh, have a lot of experience building robots to go into space. So combining that with where technology has gotten in the past few years, and certainly on the trajectory on where it's going, uh, this is a task that robotically we can prospect for resources in space. And can you tell us about your timeline? I mean, is this going to happen in our lifetime? or? This is starting today. We are launching our first technology demonstration missions this summer. We have technology that's being deployed off the International Space Station and is the first in our series of spacecraft that we're developing to prospect asteroids. We'll have missions launching every year and it'll be about two or three years time that we'll send our first customer financed missions out to a near-Earth asteroid to explore targets for resources uh, from water to platinum group metals. Okay, and so with the mining companies around you, I mean, it usually takes years of studies just to find out what's in the ground. Uh, Time-wise, I mean, I think space would probably be longer, so how do you plan on overcoming that challenge? There are parts of mining in space that you might think are really difficult, but there's actually a lot of great work that we stand on top of in starting the work at Planetary Resources. The whole science of astronomy and of meteoritics, we actually have pieces of asteroids in our laboratories today. 50,000 different samples have actually been analyzed over time, and in space, the ore bodies are like a porphyry ore that <laughs> Lost the voice, sorry. <clears throat> I'll start back from the beginning of the question. Sure, so... Timeline. So the timeline is actually maybe a lot faster than people might expect. We have a lot of resources that we can use that you wouldn't normally, or normally have. So from a combination of astronomy and the study of meteorites, which are actually pieces of asteroids that have landed here on Earth, we can study these and know with a pretty good level of certainty what we'll find out there in space. So we can tell more about an ore body in space than we might be able to tell about something a kilometer below our feet before we ever have to send a mission out to it. And as I'm sure you know, there was a recent study from Harvard that kind of blew up in the media about um, how much we really know about what's in space bodies and space rocks. Uh, do you have any comment on that? I know that a lot of media is saying that, well, only one out of ten or ten out of a thousand, whatever it was, rocks are mineable. But actually one of the big takeaways was that we don't really know what's in the rocks and a lot more studies need to happen before we can say with certainty what's in them. So do you have any comment on that? Well, there are about 60 million asteroids that are estimated to be in the solar system. And we've actually found only a percent of those uh, and a small fraction are near the Earth. There's certainly a lot of work to go to understand what's out there. But from a mining standpoint, we only need to find one and develop what one that leads into the business that develops this future industry. So. 
we're developing the technology to go out and characterize those and fill in those areas of uncertainty, just like you do in normal, any normal stage gate process to uh, buy down uncertainty in these early parts of the project. Great. And so we're here at the Vancouver Resource Investment Conference, and I, from what I know, you're the only company of your type here. So what's it like being here? What kind of reaction are you getting? Uh, well, we're having a great time. There's certainly a lot of forward-thinking people. Uh, our booth has been very exciting and interesting for a lot of people around. But uh, after five minutes of kind of hearing the context and the story, a lot of people are open to the idea that this is something that it is probably going to happen sooner rather than later. Uh, so we're here to build upon the experience that the mining industry has developed over the last decades and centuries uh, to extend this knowledge into space and to keep growing the economy and keep ensuring prosperity for uh, all of uh, us humans here on Earth and those who are going to be out in space before too long. And one final question. Um, as opposed to conventional mining, what are the benefits of space mining? Well, we have a lot of uh, opportunities in space. Uh, the uh, materials are actually... In, present in a lot higher concentrations. Uh, the transportation in some cases can be easier because in space we don't have anything to slow us down. We have abundant sources of energy from the sun uh, to heat things up and turn things into thermal processes that aren't energy constrained. We have minus 270 Celsius temperatures to cool things back down and we can do this all in a perfect industrial vacuum. All this is without any native tidal interests and uh, certainly the environmental concerns are a bit more constrained. So we like to think that in a lot of ways it's just different. We have a different set of constraints, uh, but it's certainly from an engineering uh, standpoint, it's a very boundable problem. And just like we've developed very challenging resources here on Earth, whether it's at the tops of mountains or the bottom of the ocean, uh, now we can extend those boundaries out into space. Great. Thanks so much for your time.